Welcome back to Julia, Among the Stars. Alright, let's look around and see if we can find some more information about exactly what happened here. Body, a bunch of lockers, and various bits of junk. An empty drinking cup has been carelessly thrown on the ground. That explains everything! That's why this man was shot in the back of the head. He threw the cup on the ground, which aggravated the rest of the crew and they all murdered him. Someone threw the empty pack of nutrients on the ground. Observation. It seems that at a certain point, the crew stopped caring about their living conditions. That's possible. I suppose there could have been a storm or something of the sort as well that maybe jostled everything loose and threw stuff about. I mean, everything looks all dirty and rusty, and it has been 60 years, apparently. So, that would not surprise me. Analysis. The shoe size matches the corpse on the bed. Alright, their shoes were off, so they were just, just sleeping. Normally. When they were killed. Now, something I find weird about this gathering evidence thing from bodies is that I don't actually know where the evidence goes. I've looked around in my mission data, and it's not here. So, I have no idea what actually becomes of the evidence. Commentary. A male body lies on the bed. Yes, we, we established that, Mobot. Thank you, though. Alright, I'm not gonna examine every single crate and food packet on the ground. A broken, ripped-out display is lying on the bed. Why would someone do that? Someone ripped the display from the wall. But why? Question. Was the entertainment program that bad? <laughs> you should be a comedian. I'm just kidding, you're terrible. Okay, and I believe this is actually Alexander's datapad that I have the password to, if I remember right, from when I was playing before. Oh, actually, I, wow, I just realized it actually says the name up here. I did not notice that before. Hold on. That now makes me curious. The other ones say that too, don't they? Yeah, I never noticed that. Alright, so that's Lark's datapad, which makes sense because it's right next to him. So whose datapad is this? Scott White. Okay. So I have the password for this. It's Xander756. That's strange. The password should work. Maybe I need to look around for more clues. Yeah, and I believe this is exactly where I left off uh, when I was playing before off-screen. So I'm pretty sure everything from here on out is completely undiscovered territory. The locker has been forced open. Anyways, I cannot find anything important inside. Forced open, so somebody was looking for something. Alright, I need passwords. Another opened empty locker. I would suggest examining the ones that are still closed. The Central Entertainment System service is currently offline. Apology, I am unable. Oh, here we go. Here's another datapad. That is a very, very serious face. I would assume he's military just based on his angry, stern look, but apparently he's actually part of the research department. He's a... he's a civvy. Pavel. I was reading some messages from you before. Were you the guy in the lab? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it looks like... I think I just collected a bunch of... Oh yeah, I just got a bunch of locker codes and stuff. Just kind of automatically sorted into my mission data. But, wow, there are a lot of logs here. Alright. Let's get ready for some reading. Figure out more about what happened here. 
start from the beginning. Oh, I just realized also there's the year. 2133. It is very far in the future. It's been 60 years that she's been asleep. But even when she first went to sleep, it was still already far in the future. Alright, looks like there's a log about every day. Yep. Here we go. What an idiot! So, we're supposed to write datapad dailies and not mention what happened? And what's he gonna do? Shoot us in the back if we do? Anyway, this place is weird. I have a feeling that something is really not right here. Why couldn't we stay at Zenobia? I'm absolutely sure we would have found something way more intriguing than the dirt and sand on this stupid rock. Life here, yeah? We would have had a better chance of finding life on Mars than on this Marvel, and after what we've already seen, it's just one more bullshit decision after another of bad management. So, here you are. My mandatory daily record has been written. Happy now, Mr. Lark, sir? It sounds like nobody likes, liked Mr. Lark. And he does seem like a massive dick. Tonight, the nightmare returned. I am walking, absolutely exhausted, in the endless desert. I know that I'm going to die soon. Suddenly the vision changes, and I'm standing in a dense jungle. I'm crawling slower and slower to a huge purple lake, which miraculous, miraculously appears in front of me. Lark approaches me with a broad smile, and hands me a cup of purple liquid from that lake. I take a sip and find out that it is extremely strong acid. The pain is unbearable, and I watch, screaming, as my body quickly disappears. I am glad that Alex woke me up. Strangely enough, even after I woke up, I still felt the pain from that dream. It's two days on this useless planet and still nothing to do. Mr. Lark, sir. <laughs> Mr. Lark, sir, is giving us stupid tasks to keep us occupied, but we've lost our morale anyway. Is he waiting for something? If we have to settle in this system, and this is our only possibility sur for survival, this planet was the worst choice. And obviously we are doing nothing but wasting our precious time. I was sparring with Scott today, and was surprised how cool some of his tricks are. His throwdowns are especially great, and make me want to try them on Lark. Also, it never gets old when Scott tries his levers. Maybe one of these days they actually will start working on me. He reminds me of my old sparring partner, Ganalo Tordo. He thought he was some kind of fighting wizard, but he never took me down either. But he was like a phoenix. He kept coming back for more. Okay, hold on, there's something particularly interesting here. Two days. Mm -hmm. If we have to settle in this system, and this is our only possibility for survival, this planet was the worst choice. Alright, so what led them to think that they'd have to stay on a planet? For long-term survival, what, what happened? We must have caught some local virus. No medic remains on board. Lark doesn't trust Cynthia, so it's up to me to supposedly find out what's going on. Curious enough, we've sent our data to Jay, and she was unable to find anything out of the normal. She did notice the weird red skin color, as if we have inflammation. However, all of the analyzed data are in normal ranges, so she suggested that it's just some temporary pigmentation. But where did the sudden nausea come from? If I wasn't feeling so bad, I would actually be grateful for having a task to solve. Oddly enough, I've never had a real headache in my life, so this has got me completely unprepared. I'm feeling like hell, so I'll try to sleep it off now. Okay, that was what I suspected, some sort of a local... Some sort of a, a virus or sickness that they caught from this planet. See, I think Pavel was the one in the lab, right? Trying to figure out... If something was a poisoning? Screw these daily records. Lee is dead. Yesterday in the morning, she showed us how her hair was falling away in large patches. Lurk went as far as to blame the poisoning on we know who. However, the sample sent up to Jay was, again, negative. I suggested we finally deploy our laboratory and cross-check the probe's results with our analytics station. But as usual, Lark waved my ideas away. Pretentious idiot. During dinner, Lee started coughing badly. 
At first I thought she just swallowed something wrong, but then the blood started to come out of her mouth and she fainted. We tried to wake her up, but she never did. Everyone is feeling sick now. Have we contracted some kind of an undetectable alien virus? Huh. Alright, so they talk about sending things up to Jay. That's That's gotta be Julia, right? Which I'm pretty sure is the AI. I suggested we finally deploy our laboratory and cross-check the probe's results with our analytics station. But then Lark waved away the suggestion. And we do know that Julia is apparently having problems, right? She... Uh, I forgot what she said, her data cores were damaged or something like that. She supposedly doesn't remember what happened. But is that true? That seems suspicious. Maybe Julia malfunctioned. Perhaps the data she was sending back to these people about the poisoning, or whatever it was, was not accurate. I'm not saying that was on purpose, uh, maybe she was just simply malfunctioning. But perhaps it wasn't accurate, perhaps she is what screwed them over. Hmm. It's getting all of us. Alex wasn't able to get up today, and his hair started to fall out. I tried to cheer him up, but we both know it's just bullshit. He'll be next. Lark called an emergency meeting for tomorrow, and I just hope he will announce our return to the probe. I tried to spar with Scott this afternoon, but we were both so exhausted that it was useless. We decided to call it a day and save our strength for tomorrow's meeting. What a twist. Lark publicly blamed Cynthia for poisoning us. Normally I would just call him out on that, yet there were some very convincing things he said. Everyone was, everyone was confused, and she left without saying a word, which didn't help the situation at all. I still think it could have just been our nerves, but what Lark revealed made me think. It could even make some sense, if I didn't know Lark. What if it's him and he's using all of this to cover up our jungle fiasco? Either way, she has exactly one day to explain herself. After Cynthia left, I said we should return to the probe and he totally lost it. Nobody had enough courage to say, to say anything to him after that, but if he ever threatens me like that again, I'll break every single bone in his body. I hope I'll have enough strength left for that. My nightmare has returned. Though this time, the person, who handed me the acid, wore a hood, had covered their whole face. I wondered who it was. I wanted to refuse the drink, but took it anyways, as if my hands were guided by an unknown force. As my body slowly disappeared, the hooded figure looked directly at me. I saw Cynthia, with a big evil grin, obviously enjoying herself. Then the dream ended. My memory has started to be a real issue. Today I spent five minutes just remembering my locker code. It's 978125, in case I forget again. I'm also removing the password from my datapad, so I can keep my memory struggles to a bare minimum. And Alex has died today. I knew it was coming, because he was barely breathing and coughing up blood since morning. He did incrementally change his datapad password by one, fearing someone would break into it. I am becoming so apathetic. It will get everyone soon, since that idiot refused to let us return to the probe. We'll all die like rats here. We've been informed that our problems have all been solved. We're not supposed to search for Cynthia and to immediately resume our standard operations. No other information was shared before we were dismissed. I don't trust him. It was obvious from the very beginning that he just searched for a scapegoat. There's no way one single person could kill us all like this. I'm unable to ride my dailies anymore. The pain is so intense that I'm glad if I can even crawl. Lark lost it again. It doesn't look like getting rid of Cynthia has solved anything. I don't understand why we can't return to the probe, but I no longer have enough energy to ask again. 
is starting to get Scott now. Barth has destroyed our hovercraft. That was our only way back into orbit. What was he thinking? I wanted to kick him to death, but when I saw the shattered, dying human he has become, I lost my anger. There would have been no honor in beating him. The only hope we have left is that Jay sends Mobot down for our extraction. Barth has finally died. He knew that he didn't have long, but I would never imagine he would take the last of us with him. Now it's only me, Scott, and Lark. What a team. Lark has gone crazy. He has a theory that something is here with us. He set up a station watch and assigned Scott to the first shift. I'm going to rest now. Shit. That's his body. I'm going to rest now. That that was the last That was the last thing he wrote before he fell asleep and then was shot in the back of the head. Jesus. Alright, there's a lot in there. There is a lot in here. Not only a couple passwords, but just information about what happened. So there was something, something that infected them, something that went wrong. Medically. Lark tried to blame it all on Cynthia, which sounds very far-fetched. Yeah, it just sounds like he was trying to come up with a scapegoat. And I wonder why Barth destroyed the hovercraft. Maybe he didn't want... Maybe Barth didn't want the infection to spread. Maybe that was on purpose. And somewhere in here it mentions something about the fiasco in the forest. Uh, I'm not sure where it was. Where it mentioned that, but it said something about that. Maybe it was here? I'm not sure. Oh, wait. No, yeah, here. Or, sorry, not the forest, the jungle. Uh, what if it's him and he's using all this to cover up our jungle fiasco? What is this jungle fiasco? Huh? Well, rest in peace, Pavel. Alright, let's open up some things. Yeah, so apparently it's been incremented by one. Alright, so Xander, it was 756, so it's 867. Nope. Everything's fucked. Everything's ruined. I give up. Game over, man. I probably just entered it wrong. Yeah, so. Yeah. Six, eight, six, seven? I, I think that's what I just entered. Maybe I entered Xander incorrectly. What the hell? Am I a complete idiot? Xander? Normally be 756, but instead. That's strange. The password should work. Maybe I need to look around for more clues. Uh, I think I've just misread something. Seven, yeah, seven, five, six. Well, maybe he just reduced it, I suppose. Instead of going up, maybe he went down. No? Alright, well, maybe they went up and down? Um. This no that. <laughs> um. I feel like I'm just misunderstanding it, but uh, whatever. Let's just open something else first. Nine seven eight one two five. All right, it's probably the other one. Yay! Look, he hid his ID card in there. You have very good eyes, Rachel. 
Thank you for the compliment. Not sure what I could use that for at the moment, aside from using it on the computer to look at his emails and media. Can I go into the ventilation? It looks like I can. I wonder where that would lead me to. Alright, I'm going to mess around with this data bad password for a minute and I'll be right back. 757? There we go. Okay, yeah, so he just changed one of the digits, the last one. So instead of 756, it was 757. Uh, yeah, I read it as all of the digits had been incremented. But that was not the case. Okay, once again, you handsome bastard, you. Let's see. Oh, apparently there's a password somewhere in here. All right, what happened with you? Oh, what about the dates? Hold on. 1923. One second. 1923. All right, so yeah, the the log started at the same time. It sounds like Lark wanted them to keep doing uh, daily entries, so I suppose everybody's logs pretty much started at the same time. Our first Xenophon briefing. I'm so tired, but at least this planet looks quite uneventful. Andrew told us to write our dailies, and I welcome the, the task because, frankly, what else is there to do? I feel a strange tension among the crew, as if some unresolved conflict hangs in the air. But I think it's just because we're all so tired and have lost so many friends. Wait. Ho hold on, they've lost so many friends. This is before the sickness, right? So they lost a bunch of friends before the sickness. What what happened? Hmm. But I would never change anything in my life. I'd rather die on this weird, lifeless planet than return to Earth, since... Whoa. It just ends. He was interrupted? Hmm. What a morning. There's something wrong with Pavel, but he won't share. Once again, I had to wake him up, because he was screaming as if in extreme pain. Oh, that must be the dreams. He always tells me that it's just a bad dream, but I don't remember him ever having such dreams before the landing on Ambrosia. Something must have happened down there, but nobody will ever talk about it. Not even about what happened to Necrosis Fanatos. But maybe someone who's always said he loved cats and hated people didn't get much team support in a bad situation. Necrosis Thanatos? What the hell kind of a name is that? Is that the name of a person? Ne kind of a, what kind of a person has a name of Necrosis? It's grim. Kind of badass, though. That sounds like that might be the jungle fiasco. Alright, here's the sickness starting. We're getting sick. I kept throwing up today, and I can tell I'm not alone. Either we've eaten something bad, or there's something in the air. I was not able to do anything. Not that there's anything to do here anyway. Lai Zhang caught something much worse than the rest of us. Her hair has started to fall out in patches, and it's a terrible sight. I just hope she will recover soon. I am not feeling well, but I am trying to hide it as best as possible. My Zhang is dead. Have I cursed this last planet by saying that I'd rather die here than go back to Earth? My body is slowly giving up on me, and I don't think I will last much longer. Today I spent countless hours with Barth, trying to restore communication with Julia. It looks as if someone sabotaged the data channels. Is there a hidden traitor among us? We don't want to alarm the crew just now, but unless we fix our orbital communications, we're pretty much stuck here. What a horrible day. I got the same shit as Lai, and my hair is now falling out like hell. Will I die as well? I wasn't able to do anything but sleep today. I feel so weak. Barth told me he changed the laboratory code to 014563 because they don't trust Cynthia. Why Cynthia? She would never kill anyone. 
I don't have much energy left, but I'd like to tell those idiots how gentle she is. Anyway, there's nothing I can do. I feel that I'm not going to last much longer. Maybe this planet grants us a wish, and my wish was to die here. I can start counting the days of how long I'll survive. Okay, so up into the ventilation or to the laboratory. There's still one locker I don't have the access to. Um, let's see where this goes. Okay, looks like I actually have to do something to um, open up the ventilation. The ventilation system once provided fresh air to the whole station. Or maybe I just can't go into it? Interesting. Okay, yeah, I thought the door icon that pops up when you mouse over something like this, like this, I, I thought it meant you actually go into, like, a different room, but uh, I suppose it's not that literal. It just means you see a different screen, right? It's just a screen transition, a different location, even if it is in the same room. I get it. There's got to be something I can do here at some point, though. I mean, otherwise, why would this be an entire screen? It's also a warning that says, do not cover. Could be important. Perhaps I need to cover it. At some point. Alright, let's back out. Let's uh, use the ID card for Pavel. Let's see what we have here. Crew message. Yep, already read that. Yep. I think. Yeah, I have read that. Oh, so I'm going to see the messages that I saw from... Was it Alexander? Because I'm going to see the messages from the other side. Yeah, like, this is the message I read. Yeah, I was already reading Alexander's messages and saw this from his perspective. Alright. This one I have not read. <laughs> that was one hell of a fight. Yeah, you're quite good. Still don't understand how you got away from that lever. I'm just that special. Let's have a rematch. What the hell? Barth destroyed the hovercraft? Yeah, we need to find out what's going on. Can't you somehow find his datapad password? I guess we could learn a lot there. I tried to spy on him. I got as far as seeing that he starts by entering his full name and then adds some long number. Try harder. <laughs> yes, try harder, please. Alright, so I'm obviously going to have to figure that out myself. Okay, his full name, then some long password. Some long series of numbers. So Barth Krylov is his name. Let's see, did I read this? No, I did not. It looks like a poison. Any evidence of thallium in anything we have here? Nope, I don't think so. But the symptoms are all over the place. Lie and her hair, abdominal pains, everything. Yeah. Or it's some super-secret alien virus. Oh, shut up. Seriously, I have a bad feeling about this. We will see. Let's just stay put. The last thing I want is to have some... Uh, to have around here is... Let's try that again. The last thing I want to have around here is some bloody hysteria. Yeah, that would be a real help. Not. Hey, want to meet tonight? What's up? Just thought you could help me with something. Sorry, I'm a bit busy. Maybe another time? Busy? In here? One of us actually has to do something. Yay, more pictures of rocks. Okay, that's Scott White's data pad that's large, so I haven't even found the data pad of uh, Barth. So, no point in figuring out the password. 
Okay, I think it's time to enter the lab. 014563. Wait, I can't type it in? Oh, that's weird. Well, I forgot it. 014563. Ooh. Science. Look at all this science. So much science! Yes, things to click on. The waste disposal unit is still sealed. Hmm, the laboratory is one more thing the crew failed to use properly. Maybe they were all extremely stupid. This container holds various research samples. The glove box was meant for handling unsafe materials. It was never used. Ooh! Analyzer! I get to do science myself. Cloth sample. Oh, so I can analyze all the evidence that I found from the bodies. This is where you use it. Drag items. Review. Start. Okay. Sweet. Well, hold on. Let's keep looking around before I do that. Those simple digital scrap pads are used to write notes. Wait a minute. There is a custom nano SD card inserted. Let's remove and analyze it before we try to use it. Who knows what might be stored there? Ah, this is Cynthia's data pad. Freaking data pads everywhere. Ah, here's Barth's. Another computer terminal. A standard digitally enhanced microscope. Commentary. I don't know where this part comes from, but I don't think it will be useful to find out. Well, thank you for telling me so much about this useless thing. Oh, this entire thing is an analytics station. It's quite large. What is this device? Observation. It looks like a makeshift device. It was probably constructed from other devices. Can you be more specific? It looks like a Geiger counter. The parts came from the demolished hovercraft we saw outside. That's pretty ingenious. Commentary. Why would they need to measure radiation when the central computer was equipped with sophisticated radiation detectors? Even my sensors detected radiation right away. Perhaps they broke. Hmm. Blue board. What is this? Ooh. In memoriam. Dot txt. <laughs> Even like a hundred years in the future, they still use dot txts. Hold on, let me... Before I actually read this, I want to know if I can do anything with this, or if it's just stuck on this. Turn page. Okay, so yeah. Whoa. Holy crap. There's a lot here. So this must be all the friends they were talking about, right? Hold on, let's, let's first look at the only one that I've actually read about, which is Necrosis Thanatos. A well-known cat lover spotted a feline-looking alien creature on Ambrosia. When he, when he impulsively and stupidly reached out to stroke its fur, the ravenous carnivore tore his arm right off with its retractable claws. Necrosis died when the expedition crew abandoned him in the jungle, glad to finally be free of his never-ending cat videos and related bunk decor. <laughs> what? Oh my god, would you put a bunch of dicks? Although, I mean, honestly, if you, if you keep showing people cat videos, like, you kind of deserve to die. A, a little bit. 
a little bit, kind of, kind of deserve to die. Um, I don't, I don't know if I can take this seriously. This actually just seems to be kind of funny and filled with references. Like this one, I can't even, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Phoenix Online? Cognition episode 25 was the final, this is, this is a reference to the Cognition series, which is published by Phoenix Online. Uh, is it developed by Phoenix Online as well? I think it is. I think it's developed and published by Phoenix Online. Cognition and Erica Reed story, the game series with the longest names in the history of the known universe. Episode 25 was the final blow to his fragile psyche, and he took himself out of the game permanently by smashing his head into his keyboard. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this? This is all comedy. N none of this is serious. I don't think any of this is serious. Huh. That's... weird. Anyway, let's do some analyzing. Beep boop, beep boop. Okay, data analysis and bioanalysis. Sample contains traces of dried human blood. After 60 years of laying outside the hermetically sealed station, this blood is too degraded to analyze. Splatter vector analysis suggests that the blood came from an outside source and not from the person wearing this cloth sample. Okay. This one should yield more data. The skull is badly fractured. Cause of death, laser gunshot to the head. Heavily mutated human viri are present in the body, probably caused by long exposure to high radiation levels. High radiation, and they made a, a Geiger counter. What was happening with the radiation? DNA data comparison identification reveals a match with Andrew Lark. I believe this was Lark's laser gun. The laser gun grip is covered with fingerprints. Correlation of these prints with the internal database reveals a prevailing match with Andrew Lark. Traces of Scott White's fingerprints can be detected as well. Hmm. Perhaps Scott White got a hold of it and shot Lark with it? And then put it on his body? Apparently it's been fired exactly nine times. Alright, I believe this is the sample from... Pavel. His skull is fractured by a strong blast, suggested cause of death as a laser gunshot to the head from point-blank range. The photographic analysis reveals an estimated 98.3% probability that he was shot while sleeping. Yep, Pavel. Alright, what's up with this card? Fingerprints on it suggest a match with Barth Krylov. Traces of Andrew Lark's fingerprints can be detected as well. This is perfect. Now I can try breaking into weakly protected data pads. Nano SD card contains the executable file of a program designed for password analysis. After setting the data pad into maintenance mode, this program will isolate which letters are part of the target password. Due to the limits of the program, it won't work on data pads with strong protection. Hmm. That's very handy. Okay, so I'm assuming... Since Barth had a very long password, that it's probably not going to work here. Uh, how does this work? Okay, well, I know it starts with his name, right? 
Yep. Everything's green. Okay, so there's only five more slots, so five numbers. No. Okay, two. Okay, two. Four. Oh, wow. Two, four. I'm gonna write these down. Five. Ooh. Six. Two, four, five, six. Seven. Two, four, five, six, seven. Holy crap. Awesome. Whoa, there's a lot of logs here. Holy shit. There's three whole pages of logs. Alright, well, I am going to leave that for the next episode. Yes, the mystery deepens. Finally getting some answers. A little bit. I'm not even sure if you could say I'm finding answers. Well, kinda. Yeah, I suppose it did confirm that it was a virus of some sort that seemed to be uh, what caused them all to kind of go crazy and, and die off and everything to just go to hell. But it also certainly revealed a lot more questions. What's up with the radiation? What about the jungle incident? And all that stuff. I guess the only thing that happened with the jungle incident might just be the one guy that died that apparently nobody actually liked. So maybe there's nothing more to that than, than just that, but... Yeah, there's a lot more questions now. The mystery deepens. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.